Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're just gonna be working around the garden, buttoning up some projects, a few of the things I wanna get done. I harvested my garlic late last night, um, so I need to get that all spread out so that it can dry properly, so we're gonna do that. We're also going to replant the Galloway urn on the west side, I still have spring plants in there. Uh, we're gonna finish up window boxes on the house. I had some plants on hand when I was planting everything, but I had to wait on some double up pink begonias because I didn't have quite enough of those. Um, we have to head out to my parents at some point. They are on vacation right now. I want to sneak some plants into their landscape. My mom and I were walking around and I think I could get some hostas in there. Um, it won't be a spoiler because they'll be home before this video goes out. Uh, so what else? I think I might plant some other things in uh, the raised beds where the garlic came out. I have some basil, some amazel basil to put in uh, and some tomatoes that I might put in. So anyway, it's just a lot of things that I just wanna bring you along for whatever we can get done today. And the beautiful thing is I already have dinner in the crock pot, so I know that's cooking away as we're doing everything out here. That's always a good feeling. I think we're gonna gather up some plants first for the containers and window boxes. Look at this cartload, you guys. And also I think we'll do the back sun porch pots. Let's see, we've got some Sun Patience. These are the Compact Blush Pink. There's the Amazel Basil that looks, mm, smells amazing. There's our Double Up Pink Begonias. And I think in the Galloway urn, I might do this Evolvulus. This is a Blew My Mind XL. This is a new one for next, well, the Blew My Mind isn't new. This is just an improved version for next year. And then we've got the Laguna Cloud White. I'm not sure that I'm gonna use this one. Then we've got a Prince Tut Grass, a Gomfrina, and some Luscious Citron Lantana that I may or may not use. I don't know, it's a gorgeous bunch and I'm excited about it. I think this is gonna be pretty. I mean, it already is, but give that gomfrina a little bit of time. And I think it's gonna be a really fun centerpiece plant back over here. So we'll have the nice bright pink blooms on top. And I expect that one, like it might even be too much for this container, but we'll see. I think it's gonna be awesome. And then I've got the luscious citron um, lantana below it and then the evolvulus around the outer rim. I did also end up with the three hellebores from that container and then a number of ferns, I think six ferns that I can plant out in the landscape. And those are just sitting right in here. You can see I just pulled them out of the pot. I need to groom them up a bit. The hellebores look really nice. And then we'll find a spot in the landscape for those. Look at that. Just needs a little bit of grooming. Okay, we're gonna head to the window boxes next. We're just gonna cruise right through this area. It feels weird to drive right where there used to be flower beds and grass and such. I came out last night. I don't know if you can see the orange on the ground, but I marked off the new pathway. It goes way out there, uh, as well as area to have flower bed on each side. We are trying to determine the width of the sidewalk right here, which I think we're gonna go as wide as the outer, not not like the decorative part of the fencing, but the very far post, the outermost post. So like right here. I think that'll be good. And this flower bed will come out quite a bit further. So it's actually gonna start by this beam and it'll come out to here and then come alongside the new walkway. So many fun planting opportunities, but these are the window boxes we need to address over here. You've got to admire that plant's tenacity. That's a hollyhock there, and it is just growing. It just got done blooming. There was one little pink bloom at the bottom. Okay, so you can see here that I had finished this window box. I've got the hippo rose, one, two, three, which I'm hoping it's supposed to get pretty good size, and I want that to really start filling in like sooner rather than later would be great. Then we've got a coleus lime thyme, which I love the bright chartreuse. I'm gonna use a lot more chartreuse from now on up against the house. It just shows up. And then the double up pink begonias, which could stand to be deadheaded a little bit. You don't have to deadhead these in order for them to keep blooming, but it does make the plant look nicer. Look at that. Just removing those makes them look a little bit more tidy. So you can see I got this far with the next window box and then I ran out of begonias. So I just need to pop a few right in here and then this project's done. Got the window a little bit wet, but I am so happy to have this project done. I mean, you guys can imagine. I started this like two and a half, maybe three weeks ago, and this one window box has been sitting here without its begonias. 
So now I feel like I have closure <laughs> for this project. Okay, so I think what we should go do now are the back sun porch pots. They have boxwood spirals in them that need some attention. So I'll probably tighten those up just a little bit. I won't do a heavy trim on them because we are kind of late in the season. And even though they're in shade most of the day, we still get a lot of wind. So I don't want them to succumb to any kind of wind burn or anything like that. And then I'm just gonna put some of those sun patients in here. I think that it'll look simple, clean, and pretty. Real quick, I did wanna show you in this flower bed, I planted some Albrighto coleus kind of behind this uh, bird bath. We've got some autumn frost hostas in the corridalis right here that I planted this spring. Porcelain blue, I believe is the name, has been such a delight. Like it has just produced so much color and it looks so pretty with these hostas. I also planted kind of a drift of the albrighto back in here as well. And I did plant in front of this Japanese maple. So we just got through planting all of the little lime punch hydrangeas, which I am absolutely loving just because I, I just didn't realize how much I missed seeing something there. You know, we had those limettas there that were struggling for so long. And then I came through and planted some uh, Golden Dreams coleus and some pur purple Chablis lamium around the edge there. So things are starting to fill in nicely. These are the lungworts I transplanted this spring. They bloomed beautifully and they're doing great. Silver gumdrop hookahs right there, planted most of those last year. Some of them I transplanted this year. And then we've got the coleus and honestly we don't have, or I mean the hostas rather, we don't have that much more space on this side to fill. Just like this stuff right in here. And you can see this is already starting to get sun. So. I think these full sun loving annuals will be happy in that urn. I do need to set the hose on my incredible hydrangeas though. So when it gets really hot, which we are high 90s and then we have five days in a row that are at 100 and over, um, they need a little extra water. And I don't really wanna add it to our drip system because it's not always the case that they need that. So in that case, I just bring the hose out and just put it on a slow drip at their root ball and just move it every once in a while throughout the day just to give them a little bit of extra. So you can see they're just coming into full glorious bloom and if we don't keep them well watered, which you can see this one's kind of got a little bit of a wilt going on, uh, the blooms quickly brown and I don't want that to happen. What are you doing? Just putting iron everywhere. On what? Chelated iron, uh, the hydrangeas over here. Oh, good for you, good job. Okay, so by a slow hose, I mean like trickle. Eh, maybe a little less than a trickle, like that through the Munstead lavender hedge, which smells amazing by the way, right at the root ball of the plant for like 30 minutes and then I'll move it to the next one and so forth. And I do it because it's worth it. All right, let's tackle these. Oh, those look so much better. So we've got three variegated vincas in there and three of the sun patients. I went and grabbed these because I felt like it needed a little bit of fluff. These weren't quite as big as I thought. And I didn't really want to plant more than three because I think they're supposed to get like 18 to 24 inches, which I don't expect them to here because they don't get quite as much sun. But I felt like having a little bit of soft something coming over the edge would be nice. And there's that one there. Boxwoods look a heck of a lot better too. A little less shaggy. Oh. You guys want to see the cutest little bistro set I picked up? I don't know if we can see that through the window. Look at that. Isn't that cute? Got that at the antique store not long ago. Okay, now I want to plant some basil and then we'll go spread the garlic out. So this is where I'm gonna plant the amazel basil. I'm gonna go with six plants. However, I could get away with doing two because these get so big. Like they'll get stalks on them, just huge, huge stalks but I think six will be nice. So you wanna know about a total duh moment I had the other day. I just could not figure out this bed. I had spinach and peas planted in there. I kept having to give it a supplement on water and I thought, what in the world? Why are these crops not producing and they they just look poor? And anyway, I never turned the faucet on to, this, to the drip in this. Uh, so it wasn't getting water at any point unless I gave it a little supplemental water. <laughs> So anyway, I don't think it ever fully got hydrated and that's why, uh, why it was looking the way it was. So I make sh made sure that the faucet is on. I'm gonna move this little um, A-frame trellis to a different bed and I think the basil will be just perfect in here. After I pull this giant weed, I mean, really? 
come on. <laughs> got cabbage that's ready. This is where the garlic came from last night. So I just need to clean those beds up a bit and then I'll plant possibly some more beans, maybe some more flowers. Planted, watered in. I have the drip kind of rerouted around the plant so it goes from the faucet down this side, then it comes back around here because it, it tees off and goes into this pot. So this pot wasn't getting very much water either. And it is looking a little bit sad compared to the other three in here. Thankfully it didn't die, my word. And then um, it cruises around the outside of these basil plants, rings around and then does the interior ring here so that they're gonna get water from both sides, which is perfect because basil is a little bit notorious for needing a little bit extra water than most other things. What are you doing, Benjamin? I planted some basil, you wanna smell it? It smells so delicious. It's right here, sweetie. Come look at these. You can pick a leaf and try it if you want. Or just pick a leaf and smell it. Yep, smell it. Can I eat it? You can eat it, mm-hmm. No? <laughs> How about this? Come here. Look what I see over here among the ranunculus that need to be dug. Look at this, bud. There's some... Oh, look, there's a strawberry right here. Yep. It's ready. I think it is ready. Mm. Okay, so we're in Raccio. I'm going to find a vegetable garden. Let's do a quick run. And let's run it for, I don't know, 10 minutes. Yep. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe that I pretty much forfeited my spring crop of peas and spinach, really, just because I forgot to twist the faucet on. And like, what a dumb thing. Why didn't I think to even check it midway? I just, it just evaded my brain. I don't know. Okay, so tomatoes have put on a lot of growth too. Check those out compared to when I planted them. They look awesome. Okay, so now we're gonna head into the barn and get the garlic all spread out to dry. Here is my wagon full of garlic. I grew, I I think I only just grew one variety, the Italian. I can't remember back to last fall, but I think that that's what I did. <laughs> anyway, it's my favorite variety. It's a soft neck, which they tend to store better. Um, they're also like, they stay flexible. So if you wanna braid them or make them into a wreath or whatever, you can do that. Um, we want to lay these out to dry. I'm gonna do that on this table in here. They need to be somewhere where the airflow is good, um, but out of the full sun. And then like today, I'm gonna try to kind of brush off the bulk of the dirt that's dried. But the whole idea of just laying them out for a couple of days to dry is so that any excess moisture or soil that's clinging to them has a chance to dry. And then we'll fully clean them off in a couple of days um, and get them ready for their curing process. And when they cure, um, you wanna either braid them, if you wanna braid them, you do it before the curing process um, because you don't want these stems to dry down so much that they're not flexible anymore. You don't want them to be too brittle. And then you let them cure for a couple weeks before you put them into storage. Um, and in that process, they kind of draw down the rest of the energy from the stalks and leaves and such because there's still green left. But most of these in the garden were like flopped over like this. Like this is what I was looking at <laughs> as I was walking by. Of course, they were in the ground a little bit more like this. And I could see the brown tips. That's usually the indicator that, you know, it's time to harvest me when I look like really bad like this. Anyway, so I'm just gonna work on removing just a little bit of the soil, lining them up to dry, and that's it for today. So I counted twice. I got 177 one time and 178 the next. So we'll just go with 175 heads of garlic and they're all beautiful. Look at these. And they range in size. Like some of them are nice big ones like this right here. Some of them are like medium size. I only had a few small ones. Like 
six or so small ones. And then this little pile right here, there are four in this pile. And these are ones that um, I accidentally hit with my shovel, which that's not bad, four out of 175. <laughs> so I'll just use these quicker. I'll use these first before I break into any of the uh, nice ones. We've done quite a number of videos around garlic. Uh, you know, different varieties, planting, harvesting, storing, curing, braiding, um, all those different things. If you're interested in learning more, we will link those videos down below. I think it's a great crop to grow, especially if you're a beginner. Honestly, it's one of the easiest things to put in the ground. We plant ours here in the fall, usually September, October. I jumped the gun a little bit this last year. I think I planted was it in September, like the end of September, I got a little bit anxious and just went ahead and did it, um, which doesn't really matter. But then we um, usually harvest right around 4th of July, which we're a few weeks out from that yet, um, but we're getting close. Usually when you start to see the leaves brown, especially on like the bottom, the bottom most leaves brown, then you know that it's time to harvest because the um, paper that surrounds your bulb, the look of the stalk above the soil is kind of a direct correlation to what the papery skin around the bulb is looking like underneath the ground. And if you let it go too long, the covering around your bulb won't be as good of quality and they just won't store as long. Okay, so for example, let's just grab this one right here. You can see that the bottom most leaves are brown, kind of flopped over. We've got some green left, but there's still some brown on the tips there. If we follow it down to the head of garlic here, you can see that we've already lost like a little bit of the papery skin that was surrounding this bulb. It's still really good, really good quality. We don't want to, want to let it go much past this stage right here. Um, that way we have the best storing capability with these here. Most of mine look really, really good though. Like got them just at the right time. Gosh, it's satisfying to see these laying here. And as long as they're laying in a spot where they have, like I said, good airflow, I just lay mine one on top of the other. I just make sure that the heads aren't touching each other, but they're kind of propped on each other. I mean, plenty of air is getting underneath there. It doesn't need to be a complicated process. Just kind of put them somewhere where they're not going to be, you know, in an area that could get rain or sprinklers or anything like that. Keep them in a dry spot. Um, I'm running the fan right now because I was hot, <laughs> but I won't need to run that. Um, and then in a couple of days, I'll come in and clean them all up to where they're pretty free for, of soil. And at that point, I might do some braiding. We'll see. Okay, so now I'm gonna go grab some hostas in the greenhouse. We're gonna head out to my parents' house. I wanna pop those in the ground and then I've gotta take care of all their animals and pots and things like that. So I do wanna finish off a little row of wee hostas that I started last year, but I just didn't have enough to finish. So I just need one of those. I think I'm gonna take an Empress Wu out there. I think that there's a perfect spot for a nice big hosta. I think they'll really like that. And then maybe a coast to coast or three. <laughs> this is a nice one. So Erin and I got all the way out to my parents' house and we realized we left the tailgate down. <laughs> and it's like a 10 minute drive out here. And I lost the wee hosta. And I don't know at what point we lost the wee hosta. Erin is getting in the gator real quick because it could be that we lost it when we came up my parents' driveway because it's inclined. Everywhere else we were driving, it was really flat. Darn it. I hope you find it. I can't believe I forgot to put the tailgate up. Yeah, yeah. but in the meantime, we've got the three uh, coast to coast and we've got the Empress Wu. So I'll go work on those first, I guess, because <laughs> I have no choice. We're actually gonna head down into this lower yard where we've done quite a bit of other planting projects. So right here, there's the three quick fire hydrangeas in here. This one has the most buds on it, it looks like. And then the one that's underneath the lilac that I thought might not get quite enough light, that one has the least amount of buds. So I might've been right on that, I'm not sure. Then the three hookeras and the three wee hostas. And then right here are the daisies and the penstemon. But we are gonna head this direction here. I'm thinking Empress Wu would look real nice right here. Isn't that perfect? And then if we can tuck the three gold uh, coast to coast right in here, I think that would be awesome. I think they'd really enjoy that. All right, I've gotta go get my planting supplies. Okay, got the hostas in. They look like they were meant for this spot. Look at them. So three coast to coast, they grow about 30 inches tall, uh, three feet wide. So imagine when they get big, it's just gonna be this beautiful 
huge drift of chartreuse hosta and it kind of needs it in this really shady spot before it was just art all dark mulch um, to, so to have a plant that can uh, contrast that as well as these do is really nice and then the empress Wu hosta right here now these can grow like three to four feet tall up to five to six feet wide which my mom and i as we were walking through here the other day there is like an, a ranuncula little buttercups right here that they've had here forever and i love them but they're starting to fizzle out because it's starting to be too shady down here um, so as things kind of start changing in a garden it's nice to have some things that can potentially fill in that area. Now, hostas do need a lot of moisture in order to get to that big of a size. That's something I have learned. I always thought hostas to be a dry shade loving plant, which they can do that, but they just won't get to their full potential unless they're given plenty of moisture. So my parents are actually gonna be home soon. I'm not gonna even say anything. I'm gonna see how long it takes them to notice. Um, I did water them in really well and there is drip irrigation in this area. So even if it takes them a couple of days, <laughs> um, I think they'll be fine. Okay, so now I actually just need to run around here and do regular maintenance stuff. I've gotta feed the kitties, take care of the chickens and just check all their pots. Most everything's on drip, but I always just eyeball everything. I do though wanna show you their grapevines because we're having a similar grapevine thing kind of built in the back of our berry beds to kind of create a wall and to produce some fruit. So uh, it's gonna be close to my parents' design. Uh, I'm making some slight alterations. Also, I've been standing underneath this linden tree and it's so full of honeybees. They're blooming right now. Absolutely gorgeous. And the fragrance is so wonderful. Love this tree. Okay, and the grapevines are up through here. So theirs is uh, 31 feet long. Ours will be 30 feet long, so very, very similar. Let me run to the other side quick. So they have four posts. We will have five posts. And theirs are just under, um, oh, I wanna say they're like five and a half feet. Ours will be six feet, so not very much taller, a little bit. But I think what I'm gonna do differently, they are currently training their branches to two different runs of rebar. So if I get in here, you can see all the grapes in here. They're gonna be loaded but they've got a run of rebar here and then a run oh, right up in there. I think I might do three runs so that I can train some a little bit lower um, because I do want mine to be pretty solid, pretty solid wall. I haven't decided yet though. So I don't know if I'm gonna do a run at like two, uh, two feet, four feet and six feet, two feet in between each run. But, and then ours will be stained black to match our berry beds. Those are pretty much the only difference differences. Now these grapes were here when we moved in when I was six. These grapes and that maple. Kind of fun. So anyway guys, I think that I'm going to end the video right here uh, so I can run around and get everything I need to get done, done. It's been a little bit of a weird day because I kind of set off there is a bug right on the lens. Hold on. Weird. Anyway, um, I had planned on getting all of these things done and then, uh, you know, we just had a lot of different things show up. We got some new plants um, dropped off. Uh, Benny came by and he's starting to flag all of our zones in the front area. So we had to stop and kind of go over some of the things that we want done with the area. And then we have to flag all of our stuff, like the pathways and everything tonight. So anyway, I feel good though about everything we got done today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.